Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. Today we're in the, entering the fall part of the year. We're not exactly on that perfect date, but uh, things are starting to cool down and vegetables do like the cooler season. And one of the crops that we're looking at today is corn. And uh, Mr. Bill Cook is a uh, part-time farmer here and, and a weekend farmer and has a good crop of corn. Bill, welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. Thank you, John. Welcome, uh, tell welcome us a little here. bit about your corn crop. Well, my wife and I have been growing corn for the last few years, and uh, it's a, a wonderful crop, to easy to grow, and, uh, and it tastes very good, too. Now, on this particular farm, we're on irrigation rights. We're on project water, and corn is a uh, fairly high-resource crop. It does require quite a bit of water to keep it going, and, and uh, fertilizer inputs, so it it is a crop that needs to be cared for a little bit. That's right, John. Okay, let's talk a little bit about corn. A lot of people aren't, you know, they know it in the store, but probably aren't real familiar with it as far as, uh, as growing it in the garden. And there are certain aspects to corn that, that people need to know a little bit about. And first is just the sex of the plant. We do have both sexes on the, on the plant and the silks which are out here on the ends of the ear is the female part of the plant. And uh, the male part is up here at the top of the plant. So when we go up to the tassel up at the top here, this is where the pollen's produced and the pollen will shed off of the male flowers down onto the silks. And if the silks are uh, pollinated, then you will get ears of, of uh, or the kernels on the ear of corn. So uh, each one of these silks represents almost one kernel. So you really need a, a kind of a dust storm of pollen coming down from the top onto these silks in order to get good pollination. So if you have an ear of corn that when you open it up, it has spotted, uh, you know, open areas in the, in the ear where you don't have a kernel everywhere, that's usually a pollination problem. So one of the tricks to growing corn is to make sure that we have this adequate pollination and and what do you do? Well we found that you can't grow just a single row of corn that you need to have a block area so you can get that good wind pollination over your uh, entire uh, corn crop. Most small gardens people just put in a row of tomatoes, a row of beans and and then a row of corn and, and uh, that single row, even two rows, really doesn't cut it. You, you won't really get a very, a... Uh, very good pollination, and like you said, you'll get spotty corn with spotty instead of filled out full. Right. And the blocks usually need to be a minimum of probably at least three rows, if if not more, to to get the uh, good pollination and good thick stand. Um, looking at corn, uh, of course, your catalog gives you a good description of of what the corn is going to be. Uh, we do have three major types of corn and uh, if you want to talk a little bit about what we're looking at here. Well here in our yard we're growing two types of corn. We grow uh, a sweet corn just for eating and that's what we're looking at here. Um, the sweet corn has very poor storage ability um, but it's very delicious. Uh, it's probably the most delicious uh, corn there is. Uh, so you want to harvest it and eat it within a couple of days of the harvest. We also are growing uh, an Indian corn, which is a very good storage type corn. And um, that corn, uh, you can pick it and store it for quite a long time uh, under the right conditions. Okay. Now, if we are growing two different kinds of corns, is there a problem with cross-pollinization between the two? There's, there certainly is, and you either need to separate the corn by distance or by time is what we did in our yard. Um, so we planted this corn uh, six weeks apart from our other crop and so this corn was finished pollinating by the time the next crop will be pollinating itself. Okay. One of the things I want to point out on corn here is down at the base and you can see here that corn produces what we call adventitious roots that form off of the nodes here. And corn, a lot of times as it gets tall and gets weighted down with ears of corn, 
it's somewhat flimsy in the ground and if you keep dirt pushed up against it these will root into that soil and make for a much stronger plant when the corn falls over of course it's known as lodging and uh, that's something we don't want um, show us how to pick a good ear of corn well the first thing i look for is of course the the silk to be a dry kind of brown color up here and then i kind of fill the tip of the corn to make sure that it's full filling, that it's filled out. And um, at the beginning of the season, I kind of cheat a little bit. I pull down a little and, and look at the color. You might even stick your fingernail in here and make sure you got some of the milk. And then you can tell it's ready. Uh, picking corn is very easy. You just kind of pull down, give it a little twist. Off it comes. Let's open it up and see how it All looks. Right. This is a variety of uh, sweet corn called Sweetie. And uh, it's quite delicious, good eating corn. And it grows well here in the Mesilla Valley. Looks like we beat the earworm to it. Yep. <laughs> and this is an outside row here. You can see uh, one side got a better pollination. This maybe wasn't quite at the premium pollination and, and uh, out in the middle of the field, you won't find, you'll find it filled out a little bit better. Okay. And then one of the things about corn, of course, when you do pick it at uh, prime picking time, it needs to be utilized right away. It's not one that can be stored uh, very easily, so you do want to take it right away. So I think this needs to go into a pot of boiling water. Well, we got a pot on the uh, oven right now, and uh, we could pick a few ears here and try some out for lunch, John. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.